G'day, I'm Karen Marie. Welcome to Life in the Bush. I've brought you to the coastal dunes of Western Australia on this lovely autumn day to introduce you to this attractive shrub, Illyria axillaris. This plant has some really fascinating features and it's a bit of a favourite for landscapers and gardeners because of its silvery foliage and its hardiness, but it's adapted these features over time to cope with the harsh environments where it lives and we'll delve into that in this video. So I'm standing on coastal dune to the north of Perth, the capital of Western Australia, and I'm on Noongar Wajuk country. This plant is commonly known as coastal daisy bush or coast daisy bush, sometimes called native rosemary. And I don't know the Noongar name for the plant, so if you know, please write in the comments below. I'd love to find out. Now I mentioned the botanical name Illyria axillaris and that's how I pronounce it. That's how I've always pronounced it. However, to pronounce a botanical name correctly, you're technically supposed to pronounce all of the vowels. So technically it's Oliaria axillaris. So you can call it Illyria or Oliaria. I'm probably gonna keep saying Illyria because that's just my default and I'll end up going back to that name throughout the video anyway. The species name axillaris refers to where the flowers grow from the axils. So you can see this is the axil between the stem and the leaf and the flowers are growing on that axil, hence axillaris. So that can help you to identify this plant if you look for where the flowers are growing from the axils then you know it's Illyria axillaris. Now the flowers may be tiny but they're quite impressive but we'll talk more about the significance of those flowers shortly. Let's talk about this silvery foliage first. Now you might wonder don't leaves need to be green to photosynthesize and you're correct they do need to be green uh, because the green is the chlorophyll in the leaves that allows photosynthesis, photosynthesis. These leaves are indeed green. However, if we come in close, they're actually covered in tiny whitish gray hairs. And so are the stems. And there's a reason for these tiny hairs and it has to do with where this Illyria axillaris grows. And that's in coastal dunes. In Western Australia, it grows from about Shark Bay in the north, all the way along the Western Australian coast, across the bottom of Australia, along the coastline to South Australia, through to the coast of Victoria, partway up the coast of New South Wales, up to around Sussex, and on the coast in Tasmania in parts as well. So the reason for the hairs protecting the leaves and the stems is it's almost like an insulation protecting it from the harsh elements of living on the coast. I know it looks pretty nice here but coastal environments are actually very harsh environments. Firstly the substrate is sand so it's low in nutrients and it's continuously moving. Sand shifts and moves in the wind which means it gets picked up by the wind and sand blasts plants along the coast. You also get a lot of atmosphere atmospheric salt from the ocean so these plants need to be able to withstand atmospheric salt. In summer there's very little rainfall and little moisture in the soil, lots of harsh UV rays as well and in winter you get the winter storms which absolutely smash the coast here in Western Australia. You can see if you come in closely that the older leaves, so the young leaves are all covered in white hairs, the older leaves have actually lost that coverage and the stems as well. It's these younger ones that need to be protected from the elements. By the way, if you do grow this in your garden and you want to prune it, um, I have read not to cut it down below the green leaves. So I mentioned these cute flowers earlier on. Let's talk more about them. An incredible feature of this plant is its ability to flower at a young age of about six months. And when it detects the first rains at the beginning of the wet season, it will flower prolifically, then set seed within a few weeks. This way it takes advantage of the moist soil and the rain to establish the next generation of plants. The flowers are pollinated by insects and the fact that so many seeds are produced it indicates that it may even self-pollinate. 
So here are the seeds that develop from the fertilized flowers and the tiny light seeds are attached to a feathery appendage that can travel long distances on the breeze which helps the species disperse across a large range. And when they land in a suitable environment to grow, a seedling can emerge within a few weeks. These are dunes made of sand and sand moves around quite rapidly if there's no vegetation holding it down. So the vegetation that grows on the coast needs to grow very quickly. It needs to get those roots into the sandy soil to hold on to the dune so that it doesn't keep shifting around and then the plant wouldn't have a chance of actually establishing there. These traits are a reason why this species doesn't only survive on the coast, it thrives on the coast. So it's used often in dune rehabilitation projects and it's available in nurseries if you wanted to grow it in your garden. If you live in a coastal environment where Illyria axillaris grows naturally, I'm sure you'll be able to find it in a nursery near you. Just know that if you do grow it in your garden and your garden's environments aren't going to be as harsh as the coastal environments, it's likely to grow quicker and get a bit more scraggly so you may want to keep it pruned to keep it in a nice shape. Regardless the insects and butterflies will love to visit this plant in your garden so too will other garden dwellers such as birds who like to feed on insects. What a wonderful plant. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. To support my channel, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to keep catching all of my future content. And I'll see you soon on Life in the Bush.